Hello, I'm Deanna Heron, host of the Deanna Heron Podcast Show. Have you ever wanted to do something bold, like start a business, write a book, or go for your dream job? This show was created for women just like you who want to be bold, shine bright with grace. My goal is to educate you, inspire you, and empower you with ideas that can transform your life. Be inspired by the Deanna Heron Podcast Show at DeannaHeron.net. Hey guys, welcome. This is Deanna Heron and welcome to the Deanna Heron Podcast Show. On today's podcast, I have the pleasure of introducing an amazing woman and interviewing this special lady and I'm excited to share with you. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and join me today as we speak to a woman who I believe um, epitomizes the word overcomer. So welcome to the show, Kaleo. I'm so excited to have you. You guys, this is uh, Kaleo McClay. That's not the name that I know her by. She was very young the first time that I met you, um, but she is uh, married. She has a young one and um, she has some special things that I can't wait to share with you. But more than anything, you guys, she is about to leave what in five days for Tokyo mm -hmm, on Sunday? Yeah, mm -hmm. as a as a U.S. Paralympic volleyball a champion, I believe you've. This is your third Olympics. So, Cleo, I'm just going to turn it over to you. I would love for you to introduce yourself to everyone, and we can just get started from there. Well, I am so excited you're having me. Um, my name is Cleo McClay, um, also known as Cleo Panahela McClay. Um, but like you said, I am a three-time Paralympian, um, but I am also a wife. I am a mom. Um, my husband and I met in basically when I was in high school, um, and have a, had a long journey of talking and dating. Um, and then right before the Rio Paralympics in 2016, we got married. Um, and then after, after the Paralympics in Rio, uh, we had our son Duke and he is incredible. He's uh, the craziest three-year-old I've ever known. And he's so tall um, and loves everything sports. But we, my husband and I also opened um, a store. It's Coffee Bakery and Blooms and it's called Flower and Flower. And it is downtown in Deep Juice, Oklahoma City. So if you are ever around and I know you love the area, um, you need to come check it out. But, but yeah, so I'm so excited to be here. And like I said, my name's Kaleo and I can't wait to talk. Okay, so I had an opportunity. So I've, I've known you for quite a while because you've been in the volleyball world. And yes. so is my family. We're huge volleyball family. Um, but, you know, just to see some of the things that you have done in your life, I think it's, it's so inspiring. And you guys, you were talking to... Um, uh, a, a Paralympian who's actually been to the Olympics twice. You have a gold and a silver. So this will be your third Paralympics to attend um, in Tokyo. And she's 25 years old. Okay. I just want you to wrap <laughs> your brain around what this young lady has been able to achieve in her 25 years. So we had a, an opportunity to chat just a little bit beforehand. And I'm blown away that your first Paralympics that you attended, you were how old? <laughs> I was 16, my first games. And I was, I started on the sport when I was 12. So I made the first official roster at 14. I started at 12, first official roster at 14, and then made the London Paralympic roster at 16. So crazy. How did you... So let's go back. Um, how did you get involved in volleyball? So what was it that intrigued you about volleyball in general? Yeah, so my mom actually played volleyball in college. Um, she played for Baylor um, and she loved volleyball. But us growing up, my sister and I, she wanted us to get involved basically in every sport. So we did gymnastics, we did ballet, we did softball, we did basketball. Um, and the last one we actually tried was volleyball for Oklahoma Peak Performance. Mm -hmm. And I started in volleyball when I was 10. I was 10 years old and I played on the 12-year-old team um, and really just fell in love with the sport. I think for me mentally, it was between either softball or volleyball. 
Um, but really I love volleyball and I love the camaraderie. I thought I was actually pretty good at the sport to begin with. And um, it really came natural for me. So I started playing at 10 and then around 12 years old, um, our now head coach, Bill Hameter, um, became the head coach for the Paralympic national team. And because on paperwork, I had to write down my disability. Um, so he knew of my disability. And from there, he really introduced me to sitting volleyball. So at 12, I had my first training camp and yeah, then was just involved since then. It's been over 10 years, which is crazy. Over 10 years, right. It, that is crazy because you're so young. I would love for you to explain to everyone who's listening the difference between volleyball that you played um, and, and still, I'm, I'm assuming still play on a regular basis, but what is the difference between um, volleyball, the sport that we all know, and Paralympic volleyball? Yeah, so the main difference in how we sort of explain it are what everyone's traditionally known seeing volleyball as is standing volleyball, and then the other disciplines of standing volleyball are beach volleyball and indoor volleyball. So as an extension of that, our discipline is sitting volleyball. So um, just like in from beach volleyball to indoor volleyball, there's a few changes. There's the same from indoor volleyball to sitting volleyball. So in sitting volleyball, we um, play on the ground. There is the net is shorter. The court is a little more condensed, but pretty much other than that, it's the exact same game as standing volleyball. So we run systems. I personally, I'm a setter. Um, and so pretty much how you see volleyball played standing is also how it is played sitting. Um, just on the ground and I so in middle school and high school I actually played standing and sitting volleyball at the same time um, and sitting volleyball is significantly faster than standing volleyball just because of the condensed court the ball comes over faster um, but from sitting volleyball it's a part of the Paralympics so the Paralympics um, and how we like to explain the Paralympics are it's parallel to the Olympics um, so oh, it is that. same yeah, so that. it's the same. Yeah. It's the same. Um, we have to um, qualify. You have to classify. Um, it's at elite level sport. So it's parallel to the Olympics, but it is for disabled athletes. So um, competitive, um, incredible sports, but they're all adaptive. So personally, um, my disability is I was born with club foot. Um, it actually runs in my family, and I've actually... Um, I've done a few TikToks recently talking about um, my disability, and it's been incredible to see actually how many people do have or were born with club foot, because I grew up pretty much only knowing family and knowing a few athletes who have had it in the past, um, but so many people have club foot, and basically at eight months old, I had a surgery, um, a reconstructed surgery, so really my disability now is limited calf muscle limited range of motion on my left leg um, and in my left ankle. Um, and then there's a little bit of a leg length and um, a foot length difference. So Paralympics sitting volleyball um, is the sport I play. I love it. So I love that explanation parallel to the Olympics. I love that. Yeah. I've never heard that. Um, so I just want people to get a visual of how you play the sport, because obviously there are women that play on your team that have different disabilities, correct? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so how do you play the sport? Does everyone play? I know the answer to this. Um, <laughs> does everybody, everybody has to sit, but yes. what are some of the other disabilities of, of the women on your team and how, how do you guys adjust to that? Yeah, so really the reason it's on the ground is um, to put it at an even playing field. So most disabilities on our team are um, leg um, amputations. We have a few um, arm and hand disabilities. So some people are missing their hands. Um, and so the adaptive aspect of the sport is to play on the ground. So in standing volleyball, you move on your feet. Mm -hmm. And in sitting volleyball, you move on your butt. Mm -hmm. and you move on your butt and your hands um, and that's how you get around the court so it is extremely hard to explain just because it's something we don't really have a visual of if you've never seen it 
So I always really encourage people to um, either Google us or go on YouTube and look at the USA women's sitting volleyball team. And usually our gold medal match pops up and that's a great match to watch just to give you a visual of what the sport looks like. Um, and it's incredible. I think as more people hear about the Paralympics and hear about sitting volleyball, um, the more inclusive the sport becomes, the more inclusive we feel. Um, and I think it's just a good way to, to get the word out about the sport. So speaking about um, being inclusive, we, we spoke right before this about how I, I loved how, I mean, the Olympics are, are over now until you guys mm -hmm. go to Tokyo, mm -hmm. but I've loved how they have included the Paralympians in, in the commercials, et cetera. And I think that that's gonna help your sport because just watching it as a spectator is incredible it, it there is the athleticism that you guys have the training that you have I've been at at your practices and they're mm -hmm. long and hard and you guys practice and practice and practice am I correct about that there's there's oh, so yeah. much athleticism that that takes place for all of you yeah and um like I said earlier I played standing volleyball and I've played sitting volleyball and I've played both at the same time and sitting volleyball is an extreme challenge because of how you move on the court you're moving in a way that your body isn't used to moving um because we're used to walking around and standing on our feet or running or jumping um but in sitting volleyball you kind of take that aspect away but you still have to move and it's extremely athletic um so it's really challenging and it's been so fun but I love what you talked about um with basically the coverage that we're getting. This is actually the first Paralympics that um, I think we're gonna have full coverage by NBC, which is really great. Um, not only great for us so that family can watch and that other people can see us, but makes me emotional to talk about, but um, the little girls who are looking up to us or the little girls who have disabilities and, and have never heard of the sport. Like most of the people, most people hear of sitting volleyball either through a hospital when they've had amputations or, um, or that avenue. But this is such a cool way to show people in general that one, you can compete at an elite level, even if you have been born with a disability or even if you were born like quote unquote different, um, you can still achieve what you would like. Um, and, and also, I think it's incredible because we just get to be seen. Mm -hmm. And I think the more equality we get, the, the better off our sport is and the better off we get to leave it. And I think that's what's important is leaving it for that next generation, not only so they can see us, but we, that we can leave it better than we came. You said such a powerful world, word and I got emotional too, because you're right, mm -hmm. just to be seen. Yeah. And you're doing this for the, for the next generation of athletes, for women yeah. who, who want to be seen and want to participate. So you said on NBC, mm -hmm. coverage. NBC, full okay. coverage, just like yeah. the Olympics. Um, okay. So you guys, we're, we're going to be watching in, uh, I'm going to be your biggest cheerleader. I know your family's going to be cheering too, but I'm so excited to watch you guys and get to experience this as my husband travels with you guys, clearly. Yes. <laughs> I think it's interesting because being um, on this side of it, where I've had to go through the Paralympic process with my husband, I would love for you to share a little bit of that, that process of being a Paralympian, all the things that you've had to go through, because it's quite extensive. I know that you guys have a nutritionist, um, you have a team psychologist, yeah. and I know that everything that you put in your mouth is monitored. Um, can you go into that a little bit more? Because it's it's extensive, and I don't think people really realize. Yeah, so even as, um, as you win medals and as your team is, basically they say whenever you have the possibility of winning a medal, you kind of get put sort of on this pedestal with the USOPC, which is the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee. Um, so you get more resources, but you also get, get watched closer. So for us, we, um, have not always had a nutritionist, so we're so thankful to have one now. Um, and same with the sports psych. um, they're basically more, um, resources for our team to be able to have access to, um, sometimes during training camps, because we come together for training camps once a month, um, 
it can be a lot. It's just a lot that's going on. Um, but, and then we have uh, anti-doping. So that is basically drug testing. So everything that we eat, drink, supplements, all the things are monitored and to make sure that we are holding ourselves to a high standard of um, basically being, I cannot think of the word, an even level. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's a lot. And even going into this game, as I was telling my husband, like it's crazy with London and Rio, they seem so easy. You just show up and you play and you get to have your medal. But here and now because of COVID restrictions and and all of the things, we um, there's just so much added pressure on this game. Um, we COVID test once a week. And but while we're in Tokyo, we're going to COVID test every day. Um, and just kind of the added stress and pressure of, of I might not even be able to see the court. I, God forbid, um, but that element is up in the air. So there's a lot of added pressure and I think it's figuring out how to manage the pressure. Um, and I think in life too, it's some seasons have more pressure than others and it's how you, how you manage your time, how you manage your stress, where are you getting your energy from? Um, and I think it's, honestly, it makes me feel stronger knowing that I'm going through this and knowing that I'll get on the other side. Um, yeah. Okay. So I want to go there for just a second. Do it. Go for okay. it. <laughs> so this is, this is open mic. I just want you to know. So tell me where you get your energy from. For me, I, I mean, I believe in Jesus and I believe in God and I, I truly get my energy from him and I I believe that and I think my relationship with God has taken some taken a journey on itself but um I really do think a lot of my energy comes from him and and because I know and especially in this sport um and in my life I don't really I can't have control over everything Mm -hmm. um although I want to I've become way more of a control freak recently which has been bizarre for me um but realizing that so much of life is out of my control but knowing there is someone who is looking out for me protecting me going ahead of me um makes me feel at peace enough to be able to to manage what I can control I can manage myself I can manage what I can put out into the world um but everything else I really don't have control over so the more I actually release the better I feel um and I feel like then I have more energy to take on my day. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, and I think this might be something you're going to ask me, but um, like, how do I balance everything? Yes. Um, because there's uh, in my life, there's just a lot going on. Um, to me, I don't fully believe in balance um, because I've tried balance and it has not gone well. Um, so for me, I really try and focus on what I'm at, like the thing I'm on. Um, we kind of talked about, us having um, a sports psych, one of the best things my sports psych has ever told me is to focus on the point you're on. So in volleyball, that translates really well because a lot of the time you're focusing on the last point or the point you messed up on, or you're focused on, oh, what's coming next? What's the next thing? Um, But really the only thing that you can have control, any control over is what you're in, where you are now. Um, And so I've really translated that into my life to where I'm going to focus on whatever I'm doing. So right now I'm talking to you. This is all I can focus on. Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm with Duke, my son, he is all I'm focused on. There's a lot of other noise going on, but this is my chance to focus on Duke. When I'm at our coffee shop and, or I'm baking, um, that's what I'm focused on. Um, so I've really tried to plan my life out and use time management to basically give me the space to focus on wherever I'm at while I'm there. Um, because life just gets away from you. It's so hard to really stay in one place. But but I feel like the more I focus on what I'm doing when I'm there um, and just honestly releasing what I don't have control over um, is really where I get my energy from. And that um, gives me purpose and joy and um, to really continue and add more to my plate which at this point, I'm like, I don't know how to add more, but I know I will. That's just my personality. Um, Well said, well said. So um, I'm, I'm 100% with you. I don't believe in balance. Um, And I think so many people have different 
definitions of what they think balance is, but it's hard for goal setters and visionaries Mm -hmm. to understand that you have to have that goal. You have to have that vision, but the magic happens in where you are right now. And that's, that's the only thing that we can focus on. And I love that. Don't focus on the, the, the point you just lost or the point you just won focus on today, right now, this point. And um, that's the, that's the beauty of life. And when people really understand that it's the power of this moment, because nothing else happens in the future, if you can't fully be present in the moment. And I'm, I'm speaking that of myself because I am a visionary future focused person and it's taking me, taken me a while to go, Hmm, but I'm missing out on the present and the present is where the magic happens. So Mm -hmm. I love that. So, so well said. Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting too. My husband and I, we have such an interesting balance because I can be a visionary. It's not necessarily in my immediate nature. Um, but he is just, out there vision to the moon um and so i think we mesh really well together because i am very detail oriented i like to do the small things in the now and i like to be that person Mm -hmm. um and i kind of have to not force myself but bring it out of myself to to be the visionary and um be the visionary so i can do the details Mm -hmm. And so for my husband, it's kind of the opposite way. He is the visionary, but getting himself to do the details and be in the now. Um, So I just, I think that's awesome. And that's how me and my husband are. And it's just so interesting to see how that marriage dynamic has worked with us and in different seasons too. Absolutely. My husband is always in the now. (laughs) He (laughs) He is so good at that. Yeah. And yeah, so I've, I've always admired that about my husband. Um, so one of the questions that I would love to hear though, is you are a mom, you are a wife, you are a Paralympic athlete, you are an entrepreneur. What do you, how do you find time for yourself and what do you do? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, it has taken a lot of practice to make time for myself. Um, I think by nature, I can, could be called a workaholic um, because I love to like put my hand to the plow and get going. Um, but I have actually started, I would think in the last year or so, started to slow my pace. Um, and that doesn't mean I can't like work hard while I'm working, but slowing my pace when I have the time or basically making the time for me to slow my pace. Um, So for me, a lot of it has come with reading because when you're reading, you can do absolutely nothing else other than sit there and read. Um, So that has actually forced me to slow my pace, um, especially at night. Um, I love to do yoga. Um, I love to work out. I love the sauna. I feel like a lovely place for me. Um, But I think those I tried to make enough time for. It's funny, two years ago, this is very random, two years ago, my one of my um, New Year's goals was to have my nails done, at, like as much as possible, just have my, get your nails done, take time for yourself, get your nails done. I did it twice in that entire year. Um, and that I think for myself just showed me of how um, little I was putting myself first. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because it's so small, it's just my nails. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't even give myself that. Um, so I think it really showed me of the work I needed to put in on myself. Um, so yeah, so that's, I think for me, it's reading, it's, um, even finding what I like to do more. I've started to paint, I've started to draw. Um, and I think choosing the things that I didn't make into careers. So that used to be baking that is now part of my career. So I, that's not necessarily, um, uh, joyful thing for me all the time it feels like work so figuring out the things for me that don't feel like work but feel like rest and it's been interesting to figure that out beautiful yeah that aren't work that feel like rest so it doesn't matter what it is for us right it's just finding something that helps us rest you're super creative you Mm, right (laughs) yeah you have all these creative energies about you um, reading and baking and creating. So yeah, 
I love that. My sister, um, I, and I, we, I've like, as I've processed this as an adult, um, I really realized that as a teenager, I'd put myself into this athletic box. So my sister, she um, had always been the artist. She can draw, she can paint, um, sculpture. She's incredible. Um, and then I was like, oh, I'll be the athlete. Like that's who I'll be. And so I really never um, experimented with creativity on my end. I was just athlete, going to work out, going to work hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after Rio, I was thinking, what am I going to, like, what am I going to be after sports? which is funny for a 20 year old to think about, but I, I think with being an athlete, you just know that there's a timeline to it. Um, I can't be an athlete forever. I can be athletic forever, but um, being an athlete to this degree um, won't last forever. And as, although it's inevitable and that's the, that's the career I got in. Um, so that really had me starting to think of what else I wanted to do. So I started decorating cookies um, and, started working on that and made a business out of that and then started baking and really started to flourish this creativity within me um, and kind of let the creativity out, like let her loose because she had been like just shoved away. So I wouldn't be compared to my sister. Um, and I think the more liberty I've given myself of creativity, the, the better I felt. Yeah. And that, that creative side of our brain, that's our, that, that's when we feel closest to God. Mm, yeah right yeah yeah because we're not overthinking yeah um so good Kaleo so good so I have just a a few questions that I want to ask you so I'm just interested to know these questions about you because um you have so many gifts and talents what is your biggest motivator what motivates you the most I think having dreams and and then having people I want to show what they can do if that makes sense so I think in the past it's been only my dreams my biggest dream I've ever had was to win a gold medal Mm -hmm. and then after that I was like okay what's your dream um and really it's been to be an athlete that others can look up to um and and want to be like and and I think for me that is now Duke I want him to to see his mom compete at this elite level and but also have good character and not be self-centered, but to, to love her teammates and to want to be the best teammate she can be. Um, so I think for me, that motivates me the most. Making an impact. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> Your biggest achievement to date. Oh, um, I mean, my gold medal is way up there, but I think also going through pregnancy (laughs) like that that was not easy um I think to like see my body change like that was kind of tough but also really cool um and then to just see how my body went back to the to the athlete it knew it was um yeah so I think that achievement of like my body's on like I feel like I didn't do much but my body did it all um is a huge achievement for me I I love that. I love that question because so many people will think, oh, it's the gold medal. It's got to, it's the gold medal. It's got to be the gold medal, but typically it's not, it's, 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 um, something more precious than just the achievement of a gold medal. It's, Mm -hmm. it's actually the, probably a lot of the memory that and the magical moments that happened around, around that pregnancy in the one of my, yeah. And even with the gold medal, a lot of, I think one of my favorite because the gold medal is the achievement, but it has, doesn't show the journey. Um, mm-hmm. And even yes. within Rio, the tournament, um, we had lost in pool play and we had to pull up our bootstraps and figure out how we were going to beat them in the finals um, and really came together as a team and worked really hard while we were already at the tournament um, to, to beat China and to win a gold medal. So I think the gold medal is the the proof of that but you don't get to see whenever I say gold medal in my mind I see all everything the whole four years and and the whole tournament um to just have this gold medal so when I say gold medal I mean all of it that went into it um I you know I'm I I love that you shared that part of it because if you look on social media and social media is is 
you know, everybody's watching social media right now. We get to see the highlight reel. We get to see yeah. the success stories, the cars, the ha the homes, the whatever, but it's the journey that makes the person. And yeah, yeah so yeah, congratulations, because I know that's, <laughs> that's a tough <laughs> journey for sure. Um, what is your happiest moment? My happiest moment, like just in life is time with my family. Um, this is very random, but today, I was at the dentist with my son and he was just watching this train go by the dentist in such awe. Like, I wish I could show you this video just because his eyes lit up. He was doing this like chugga chugga choo choo, chugga chugga choo choo, this like little dance thing. Um, and I think for me, those are the, my happiest moments is to like look at this kid who I gave life to and see him see the world in such wonder. Um, and then I get to be his mom and I get to be a part of his moment. So for me, those are my happiest moments is just with my family and, and getting to be a part of their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Many gold medals, those can all go away, right? But yeah. it's, it's, it's the memories that we create that last forever. Yeah, and absolutely. yeah, so precious. Any last minute tips or tricks that you want to share with anyone in the women just to teach them to be bold and to let their light shine because you, my friend, have such a bright light. Um, just watching you as a 25 year old, I'm thinking about you watching your son doing chugga chugga choo choo. I can <laughs> only imagine your mama looking at you as a 25 year old and just, you know, the joy that you bring um to her because i know what it is like having a, a child that's 26 and one that's 23 it, it that never goes away but any um any last minute tips that you want to offer to all of these women listening i think something that i would want to add is lead from a healthy you um i think we, a lot of the time, and we talked about this earlier, we want to put everyone else before yourself. You want to put your family, you want to put um, your son, your job, but all of those are better when you're the best you. Um, and I think of it at, from a teammate standpoint, I'm the best teammate when I am a good me. When I have had rest, when I feel like I am in a healthy place, that is when I can offer the most. Because um, when you're offering on empty you're just basically pouring out of an empty cup and you can't give anyone anything so basically my encouragement would be lead from a healthy you what how can you be healthy what can what can you do to be the healthiest you um, for the people around you and yourself and that's so hard for women i'm so glad yeah. that you mentioned that because as women we feel like we have to come last our family comes first our careers come first in my generation it was literally wear yourself out until you have nothing left mm -hmm. and today i coach people through their health i coach people through their leadership through their limiting beliefs etc and when we fly on an airplane, well, the flight attendant says, when the oxygen mask drops, put on your mask first before yeah. you put on the mask of your child. And mm -hmm. it's the same in this life. You have to take care of you so that you have more impact, Kaleo. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that is, you are so wise as a 25 year old. I'm honored to have you on my podcast and I have learned so many golden nuggets. You, I just can't wait to see, first of all, I want to come to flower and flower, obviously, um, the next time I'm in town and after Tokyo, so I can yes. see you. Yeah. But just to see how you have just are just this beautiful inspiring woman and i know that your impact is going to go worldwide so thank you for your time today thanks for having me and for those of you who are joining us just a reminder if you want to join my private facebook group deanna's diamonds just go to deannaheron.net and you can push on the facebook icon and it can add you to that page it's just a page for us to encourage each other, keep each other motivated as we walk this life as women, business owners, moms, et cetera. And just um, one quick reminder, you guys, I am running a challenge. So if you go 
and like, rate this podcast and subscribe. Take a picture, tag me on Instagram, and you will go in a drawing for a one-on-one 30-minute coaching call with me. So I'm giving those away this entire month. Love to have some one-on-one time with you. So um, just go like, rate, and review, and then make sure you take a picture and tag me at Deanna Heron. So Cleo, again, thank you so much. It was such an honor to have you, and I cannot wait to share you with the world. So happy Tuesday, everyone, and God bless you. See you next time.